Normally, I would ask Amazon Studios, how do you royally fuck up anything that's supposed to be remotely reminiscent of J.R.R. Tolkien? But at the same time, given what we've seen the past several months and the lies perpetuated by the showrunners and so forth, is anyone genuinely surprised? Is anyone genuinely surprised at these first two episodes alone? Hello, this is Mara Jade, and I am here with my review of the first two episodes of Rings of Power. I'm going to keep this as relatively short as possible, and maybe, just maybe, touch on minor spoilers, but for the most part, I'm going to stay spoiler-free, because a lot of the spoilers do go into my problems with lore-breaking and so forth, and it really requires going into a live stream discussion, which I have planned for tomorrow late afternoon. So if you want to hear my thoughts going more in-depth, Tune in for that. Uh, about 4 p.m. Eastern, I'm planning for tomorrow afternoon a spoiler discussion. But at any rate, let me just give my overall opinions, thoughts, so forth about the first two episodes. It was a slog <laughs> to get through. It was a slog to get through. I kept having to move my cursor over the screen to see how much time was left. I shouldn't be doing that. It's, it's supposed to be drawing me into Middle Earth. It's supposed to be drawing me into a world that is not our own. A fantastical world. Wondrous, awe-inspiring, and so forth. And I just kept moving my cursor. Just periodically. Just drawing it back and forth. Oh, great. Half an hour left. Oh, great. 20 minutes left. It, it, I was literally just about crawling my way through the first two episodes. The first two episodes shouldn't be boring. They should not be boring. And lore-breaking aside, that's the... That's the show's biggest sin so far. You may have these characters, like the ones on screen right now, in name only. Elrond, Gladriel, Gilgalad. In name only. I'm not supposed to be looking at my wa proverbial watch. I'm not supposed to be rolling my eyes. I'm not supposed to be stopping to take notes periodically because Lord knows I had to. Lord knows I had to, because I, because I, I, it got to a point where it's like I had to pause this. What the fuck's going on here? Why is this happening? This doesn't make any sense. This no, this doesn't make any sense given what we know about certain characters because these are supposed to be Tolkien's creations, right? Case in point. Case in point. Front and center. Galadriel. In name only. Galadriel is a commander. She never was a commander. Never was a commander. She might have sworn an oath to Feanor, but she herself was not a commander. The showrunners for this series took that title away from in name only Elrond on the right of the screen. He was a commander. He served in name only Gilgalad on the left of the screen. He remained in Linden. And the only time she really left Linden before uh, most of the events later on in the Second Age occurred. Remained in service of Gilgalad. As a commander. But they reduced him to a herald, essentially. An ambassador of sorts. A cunning architect, as he was described in um, uh, publications and marketing and so forth. Leading up to the series premiere. That's not Elrond. That's not Elrond at all. No, nor is, like I said, Gladriel a commander. But yet, but yet, she has her motivation, folks. She has her motivation... For being a commander, and is essentially selfish. It's essentially fucking selfish. Alright? Now, they don't touch upon all the brothers Galadriel ha had. They focus on only one. Finrod. It has, it has to be Finrod, basically. Because of what looks how his death appears to be portrayed in the Rings of Power without going into detail. They even change Finrod's backstory a little bit in that regard. They even change his backstory a little bit in that regard, because... If you've watched any of my other live streams, uh, particularly the one recently where the Cringe Factory, uh, Ms. Martin Muses and I break down certain articles for Rings of Power. I'm calling it Ring Rings of Power from now on because it's certainly not anything associated with the Rings of Power within Tolkien's world. No. He died while hunting down Sauron. He died while hunting down Sauron. While, while Sauron is sort of a part of Finrod's quest, it wasn't, that wasn't the overall purpose. 
That wasn't the all pur overall purpose of the quest. But you had to change it. You had to change it because you couldn't include Baron or anything like that. Because Baron was with them. Baron of Baron of Baron of Luthien was with them. So you're excluding him. So you so you can't have the quest as it nor was in the Cimmerillion. They can't have that. So you, you remove Baron and have Gladriel take up Finrod's revenge quest. You make her not only selfish, but I can't believe I'm agreeing with this show of a reviewer. A Mary Sue and a Karen. Because it, it's all going to boil down. It's all going to fucking boil down to you should have believed her all along, folks. You should have believed the women all along. Believe all women. Hashtag believe all women. That's what it's going to boil down to. Because she's the only one for the whole time that we see her particularly on screen in the first episode is her trying to convince others that Sauron is still alive. She feels it. She somehow knows it. Everyone else doesn't believe her because it's been centuries and he hasn't reared his ugly head, proverbially. But she believes he's still alive and it's all going to come down to you should have believed her all along. But there it is. What reason does she give for believing it? Female intuition. And a bloodthirst. Like, literally. Because her sole purpose, really, is to avenge the death of her brother. She claims it's also to smite the evil from the world, but really it boils down to her selfish, her own selfish reasons. Why? And Gladriel wasn't that in Tolkien's lore. She wasn't fucking selfish. That's what it boils down to. That's really what it boils down to. And the actor who plays Gilgalad, the actor who plays Gilgalad, left of the screen. I don't know what it is with direction or anything from the sh like directors or uh, showrunners or whatever. But why is it that they always like assume having the actor speak his lines slowly will, would amount to anything that would come off as wise? It was mundane. He had this one facial expression just about the entire fucking time. I was like this. Are you awake? Is there a personality there? The whole time. See that look on his face right there on the screen? Just about the whole fucking time. Again, like he speaks slowly, so it must mean he's wise. It must mean he's wise, because he's the, the king, <laughs> pretty much. Oh, but if so, I'm like, oh my god, this person. Give these people personalities. I don't care if they're elves, give them personalities. Or at least personalities that we, we can relate to. He, Gilgalad's boring. Gladriel's fucking insufferable. And Elrond. What the? What is he supposed to be? What exactly is he supposed to be? I don't know. They like changed both of the two main characters' backstories. Entirely. So I have no idea what the fuck they're going to do with Elrond. They also changed Celebrimbor's by... By extension with Elrond's story, because Celebrimbor, a.k.a. dressing like he's the fifth member of the Golden Girls troop, he was the one that had dealings with the dwarves of Khazad Doom. He was the one, but they take that away from him. They take that away from him and give him to Elrond. And on top of that, going into episode two a little bit... Since Elrond is friend of the dwarves, in particular Prince Doran, which in fact that breaks lore because there's never two Dorans at the same time, but I'm going to go into that further tomorrow. He's friends with the dwarves, alright? And he wants to go there because the dwarves are craftsmen. They will help build, Celebrimbor build this tower. That Why he wants to build this tower exactly, we don't know, but he wants to build it and it has to be, it has to be done by spring according to him. So it's kind of mysterious in that regard, but it has to be done by spring. So Elrond says, well, let's, let's go to the dwarves. You know, like, have you thought about looking beyond your own race? Pretty much is like his words, I believe. Um, and Durin tells, basically tells Elrond to fuck off. Uh, Elrond uh, invokes the rights of um, Segan uh, Tarag. That was just like, try looking that up. It's non-existent. But anyway, it's basically a rock-breaking contest of endurance. 
of endurance. And basically, for a little bit of time, you see him, uh, Elrond smash a rock, Durin smash another, another rock, and so forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until one gives up. It, it's essentially the equivalent of a dick measuring contest. Essentially what it is. And you find out why Durin's pissed. i uh, not going to go into the, those details, but anyway, somehow Elrond convinces them, so forth. Galadriel's quest, or her quest for vengeance, um, leads her to not exactly a dead end, but at least a clue as to like where Sauron could have been, or was, was, or could be going, and so forth. But the elves in her company lay down their swords and say, "We're not fo fucking following you anymore, sweethearts. We're going back. We're going back." Because also because uh, Gilgalad's a little bit pissed off at her because she's broken orders to return home. She's insolence, pretty much. Again, not a trait of Galadriel, but insolence, sheer insolence. All right. And Gilgalad chooses to basically extend them honors rather than punish them, particularly because of what Galadriel did. And in honoring them, um, allows them, essentially, or at least, at least tells them that they will be traveling to the Undying Land, essentially the equivalent of heaven for the elves. Which really only amounts to, he wants, he, he wants them, ha the elves that were under Galadriel's troop, um, inner troop, happy, and so forth. And he kind of wants to get Galadriel out of there because uh, he's done with her. He's essentially done with her. And he knows that she's not going to stop so long as she's in Middle Earth. So he basically sends her and her troop to the Undying Lands. He's like, he's like, just fuck off, right? She doesn't go. She takes back, she grabs her brother's sword, because she takes Finrod, you know from the trailer, she takes Finrod's uh, short sword, dives off the ship, so she doesn't go into Valinor, and somehow makes it most of the way across the Sundering Seas. And so she finally comes across um, Hellbrand, the non-canonical human male character, Hellbrand, who drops the line, looks can be deceiving, which might be foreshadowing, I might be reading too much into it, but looks can be re deceiving, which is uh, twofold ties into how like they, they discover that she's an elf, and also the fact that uh, in Tolkien's lore, uh, with the forging of the rings of power, Sauron disguised himself as An by the name of Anatar. He disguised himself as an elf to blend in with the elves. So that might be kind of like a n nod, nod, wink there to them. Then you have the non-canonical characters of Erendir, the Hood Elf, and Bronwyn, the healer of, and she's a healer in her, t uh, her town, village, whatever you want to call it, and Erendir, along with another troop of elves, are part of a watchtower to make sure that Sauron never returns, and they've been there for as long as they can remember, or at least, at least Erendir has been there for like 80 years, according to him, so forth. We don't know how long the elves themselves have necessarily been there, but they've been watching over and then receive orders from Gilgalad saying, hey, there's no more evil in the world, essentially, so we're going to disband you. You're going to return home. Watchtowers, no more. But Erendir and Bronwyn are like, you know, lovey-dovey with each other, essentially, without saying anything. Um, so it's a forbidden romance. That's where the kind of the soap opera aspect of this series is going to be coming into play. Bronwyn has a son, Theo, who somehow finds a relic with Sauron's mark on it, which is... A blade of Morgul. It has to be. A blade of Morgul. Somehow finds this relic. We don't know how. He, we just know he has it. Because he shows it off to one of his friends. In the village. And then that's we're, we're also kind of introduced to the fact that. Uh, orcs are still wandering. Wandering the world pretty much. When in fact orcs were bred in specific purpose. As soldiers for Morgoth and Sauron. And speaking of Sauron, I gotta backtrack a little bit. Sauron at the beginning, very beginning of the first episode, is called a sorcerer. Is called a sorcerer. He is a Maiar. And there's another very well known Maiar, even to normies, and that is Gandalf. Maiar are spirits, they're essentially heavenly beings. They wouldn't just be called sorcerers. Now, granted, granted, five were wizards, but they were Maiar. They were Maiar. Okay? That doesn't change the fact that they were Maiar. Same with Sauron. He's not just a sorcerer. He's not just a sorcerer. 
for all intents and purposes, he's the equivalent of an angel. A fallen angel, but the equivalent of an angel. So, if I were to give this... I, I have to stop here with this review, folks. I have to stop here with this review, folks, because if I go too much further or longer, I'm going to be touching on to some major spoilers, but the gist is, the gist is boring and lore-breaking. Boring and lore-breaking. They bastardize the characters. They butcher Middle-earth. And... Lord knows there's like six more episodes that we're going we're gonna to have to trudge through. I'm not even going to give this a rating because it's really not even worthy of a rating right now. It's really not even worthy of a rating. I might give a rating tomorrow during the spoiler discussion live stream that I'm going to be doing. But really, in my humble opinion, don't break your necks to watch it. And if you do, if you do, full on, find a way to sail the high seas. Don't give Amazon any clicks. Don't give Amazon any clicks. Don't fucking hate watch this series. Amazon doesn't fucking care the reason why you're watching the series. All it cares about is how many people click on each of the episodes. So if you don't click on the episodes at all, it's not at any way me means any an equivalent of revenue or profits for Amazon Studios. So no hate watching. You want to hate watch it at least Sail the high seas, but no hate watching directly through Amazon. That's just me. That's just me. I'm not giving those bastards any fucking clicks whatsoever ever because this is not Tolkien, this is not Middle Earth, and these sure as hell aren't his creations. But what are your thoughts down in the comments below? Uh, did you watch the first two episodes? And if you did, what did you think of them? Um, did you give it an overall score? Let me know all that. Try to keep it relatively short and spoiler free because I don't know how many people have seen the two episodes if they were planning on watching them. So try to keep spoilers to a minimum. Like I said, I'll be live tomorrow on my YouTube channel for a more in-depth discussion of the first two episodes with a guest or two. So tune in for that about 4 p.m. Eastern. I'm really going to dive into this shit. Uh, tonight, you can catch me on Twitch, Jade underscore Fire. I don't know what game I'll be playing, but given the fact that I'm now more and more pissed after watching... The first two episodes of Rings of Power, I think I'm going to have to play like Destiny 2 or something where I just shoot shit. Pretty much. Just shoot shit. For several hours. But at any rate, let me know again what your thoughts are down in the comments below. This is Mario Jade. Catch you on the dark side. And... I even forgot the fucking Harfoots.